I want to talk today about hydride reductions of esters. And the prototypical example of this reaction is the use of lithium aluminum hydride to reduce an ester to an alcohol. And I want us to think a minute about the mechanism of this reaction. And whenever you see lithium aluminum hydride, you want to think about it as a source of hydride, H minus. And H minus is going to act as a nucleophile. And if we look at our carbonyl, the carbonyl is polarized with a partially positive charge on the carbon and a partially negative charge on the oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative. Well, the hydride is attracted to the partially positive charge. And it attacks that carbon, and the electrons in the double bond of the oxygen move up onto the oxygen because if it did not do that, we would have five bonds to carbon, which we don't want to do. If we look at the product of this attack by the hydride, we get this anion with a negative charge on the oxygen. Well, the next thing that happens is that the electrons on the oxygen come down and the OCH3 leaves. And we get this aldehyde plus the methoxide ion that has been kicked off of the molecule. Now, the aldehyde is a carbonyl C double bond out, just like the ester was a carbonyl C double bond out. Well, lithium aluminum hydride loves to react with carbonyl C double bond out. So another hydride ion will attack this carbonyl just like before over here. And what we get after that attack is this product with one, two hydrides added to the carbon. Now, this looks very much like our final product. Now, this can react with something that has a, a proton on it, like uh, water or an alcohol to make our final product. Now, one of the things you might want to know is, what if I don't want to make the alcohol? What if I want to make my aldehyde. What if I want to stop here at the aldehyde? Well, with lithium aluminum hydride, you just can't do that. The aldehyde is actually more reactive than the ester. So as soon as you make any of this aldehyde, it's going to react right onto the alcohol. So even if you used a limiting amount of lithium aluminum hydride, as soon as any of this aldehyde is made, it's going to react before any of the remaining ester reacts. So there is another way to do this. We have to use a slightly different reagent. It's called diisobutyl aluminum hydride and its structure is this right here with aluminum in lithium aluminum hydride we have the aluminum bonded to three other hydrides it's actually three total hydrides the fourth one is sort of in a complex but three hydrides the lithium the di dibol diisobutyl aluminum hydride is bonded to one hydride in two isobutyl groups by the way we abbreviate diisobutyl aluminum hydride as dibol h and the reason that diisobutyl aluminum hydride allows us to do something different in order to understand that we need to look a little bit more detail at the reaction that's happening. In particular, we need to look more detail at this complex right here that I've just drawn as an anion. And that's really a simplification of what we have because if we look at it in more detail, this is what you really have. The aluminum from lithium aluminum hydride is complex to that oxygen. And the important thing to know about this is this is unstable. Since it's unstable, it breaks down pretty quickly to our aldehyde, which can then be attacked by another hydride and finish the reaction as an alcohol. On the other hand, if we look at the complex made by the diisobutyl aluminum hydride, it looks like this and it's stable at low temperature. What this means is at low temperature, it never breaks down to the aldehyde. This reaction going from this complex to the aldehyde never happens. Because that never happens at low temperature, I never make my aldehyde and I don't get any more reaction. So as long as I stop the reaction at low temperature, I'm going to end up with my aldehyde in, as my final product. So in terms of how we functionally do this, how do I get this to make an aldehyde for me? I run the reaction at low temperature and then I add water or alcohol while it's still at low temperature. So if you take this ester right here, which is actually a derivative of the amino acid proline, and you react it with dibol H at minus 45 degrees, and when the reaction is done, you quench it with methanol to break down that complex we talked about, the product you get is the aldehyde the aldehyde derivative of proline. We added one H, we don't react this anymore. Aldehyde is our final product when we use diabol H at low temperature. 